back, everybody, to the Birdies and Bourbon Show. Uh, it's a pleasure today to chat with Kyle Porter, CBS golf writer, and uh, why he's here, uh, an author. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, let's get into the book, man. What's going on? Not much. It's uh, it's a new year. Uh, not a new season, but a new year. And uh, it's been already a ton of fun golf. So it's January 11th. I'm already excited about 2022. Uh, I know we're going to go back and talk a little bit about 2021. But, you know, a lot of what's happening this year is just a continuation of what's been happening for a while, which is that there's a lot of, I think, really fun personalities and events and and uh, just different things going on at, at the highest level of professional golf. So it makes my job uh, a, a ton of fun uh, every single day to to write and talk about this stuff. Yeah, well, well, why we're here, right, is to uh, to talk about a normal sport and uh, what I would consider a time capsule of uh, of the twenty one season. And uh, you know what uh, what what kind of led you down this path, capturing those moments. Uh, you know your your reflection of what happened during the season, right? H- how'd you get here? Why'd you capture it? Why is it written down for people to go back and and uh, and check out? Well, I, I think I think the way that you said it is right. It's it's very much a time capsule, and it, and it was almost like, and and some of this I think had to do with like the really long reset after COVID back in 2020. So you start back in June of 2020, and it's essentially uh, what is that like 15 straight months, kind of nonstop. We got a little break in December of 2020. But not not a big one. I mean, you had uh, Masters in no- at the end of November, and then it was like Kapalua beginning of January, and you're like, "Wow, we're right back in it." So it was almost like all these things were happening so quickly, one after the next. But I couldn't even go back and remember like who won this and who won that. And I was like, "Man, I, I just want to capture like a snapshot." I only did 2021. I probably could have extended it back to uh, June of 2020, but. I just wanted a snapshot of like, for even for my own sake, for posterity of like, hey, this is what happened. This is what mattered. These were the these were the guys that mattered. These were the tournaments that mattered. These were the moments that mattered. And and you know, it's it's very subjective. They were the ones that mattered to me, and and maybe other people remember them differently. But that was kind of a big part of why I went back and kind of just captured twelve months, really eleven months of what went on in twenty twenty one. Yeah, I mean, definitely lots of, uh, you know, I, I would agree with you. I think you captured, you know, some highlights. And again, to, to your point, right, I mean, it's uh, looking at it, you know, everybody's probably going to have a different perspective or lens depending on, you know, how they lean. Uh, you know, I mean, being the mayor of Spieth Town, I mean, of course, you're going to you're, you're going to you're going to capture, uh, you know, every Spieth moment that you can. But, you know, in, in looking, you know, it, it, as you've and you've probably gone back and reread and, and obviously, you know, editors and what have you that what's it was there anything that uh, that, that you didn't highlight enough of, I mean, was there a, a miss wouldn't be an, an accurate way to describe it, but, but was there an emphasis that, that, that you're like, ah, eh, man, I, I, I should have, should have highlighted that a little more or spotlighted. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, really even, even looking at what's happened so far in 2022, I was like, man, I, I kind of blew past the Hawaii swing in 2021 when I, when I wrote the book and, you know, it was Harris English. It was Kevin. Na. it wasn't like the biggest deal in the world, but I think it was easier. Like I did this thing where I went back and started at the beginning. And then as I went on, I kind of went deeper and deeper into like what was happening, ending with the Ryder cup, which was probably the deepest thing. And I think some of that was because it was fresh, fresher in my memory and I, I, I wish I would have made that flatter. Like I, I would have given maybe more attention to what happened at the beginning of the year and maybe taken away a little bit from what happened at the end. I just, I, I found myself, I, I just kept writing things at the, like about what happened at the end of the year. And I wish that I would have maybe like shifted a little of that, not even Hawaii, but um, I mean, the, the, the first six weeks last year of 2021 were awesome. You had Homa Riviera. You had Brooks at the Phoenix Open. I probably didn't give that enough attention. Uh, There was just a bunch of, you know, more Akawa wins. There was a bunch of interesting things leading into JT winning the Players Championship. So I think if I had to go back and and if I do it again this year, I would give greater attention and greater focus to the beginning of the year. So so a couple of call outs. Uh, If I remember (laughs) correctly, uh, I mean, the book pretty much opens with... uh, 
Kapalua and a guy running around with an umbrella in front of Bryson's ball. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm j- just say it. That's that, true. That's spoiler, true. Spoiler alert. So, uh, so, so that definitely happens. Um, but if you haven't, if you haven't read the book, if you haven't checked it out yet, I think it's, uh, is it normalsport.com? A normal sport.com. Yeah. That's A-normal right. Sport. Yeah. Com. yeah, be, yeah. Be, sure to, be sure to check it out. Um, I'm with you. Uh, the whole Brooks thing at, uh, you know, at waste management didn't see that coming. He definitely didn't make a draft King lineup. I'm like, uh, <laughs> he, he's out there on vacation, man. He is, he's, uh, you know, he, nothing's going to happen, uh, on, on the Brooks show, not a true story. Uh, but yeah, I, I can kind of see where you're going and, you know, as you kind of, flat line, right? Or, or, you know, is there an equal amount of attention on every event that happens? You, you brought up a, an interesting character and I referenced Spieth earlier. Dan and I are both Spieth fans and, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, in, anything the guy does, right? And, and when, we, when we said the mayor of Spieth town, I mean, we're thinking there's a movie there. Just, there, just, is, <laughs> there is definitely. You and Taylor, Terrell Sheridan, <laughs> CBS All Access, here we come. <laughs> just, just, just saying. Uh, I, I want to go back to, you mentioned Colin Morikawa. Yeah. And 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 he's on a um, would you when you look at what Colin's done so far, would you say that he is on a speed trajectory at and you know, given their, you know, at the same time in their career, would you say he's there or, or well on his way to be there? I, I think he's there. I think the, the uh, it's, this is so hard to to. <laughs> to figure out because, and this is, I love talking about this stuff, but it's hard to figure out because Spieth didn't win as much and he didn't win as many majors uh, in as few tournaments as more. More cow has only played like 60 events. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's won what? Six, five, I think five PJ tour European, uh, Europe, the race to Dubai, mm-hmm. two majors. And you're like, wow, that pace is historic. But the difference is Spieth was like 19. You know, and and Morikawa had all those years at Cal. He he had like a a bigger like a wider on ramp into like what he's doing now. Then I mean, Spieth was like one year at Texas, boom, he wins the John Deere, and you're like, whoa, wait a second, like nobody's done this in a hundred years. So yes, I think he's there just because his trajectory is pre- like just preposterous. But I do think there's the caveat of like he. Like Spieth didn't have the experience, even though it wasn't professional experience that Morikawa has had. He was still playing golf, learning the swing, maturing. You're diff- You're so different when you're 25 than when you're 19, right? And so I think that's the one caveat there. Although I, I think if like if if I was forced to, I would say that Morikawa is as good as Spieth was at at kind of the same uh, number of of tournaments played. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, what's the, but so what, what's the buzz that's missing, right? I mean, you, the, Spieth got the buzz and, and if you like, so take Ricky Fowler, for example, right? I mean, the, the marketing machine that is Ricky Fowler, if he never played another golf tournament in, in his life, right? Professionally, he's still a marketing machine and the buzz is there. I'd say the right. same, the same exists for Spieth. And for some reason, that's that the buzz for Morikawa just, it's not, I, I, I don't feel it at least. I'm not saying that I'm not, I'm a fan, I'm just saying, you know, I don't feel that same energy just surrounding, you know, where, where Colin is and what he's, what he's doing. I just, I don't see it being captured. That's a good question. And I, I agree with you. I think, I think there's some Mikkel, some Phil Mickelson and Spieth where part of the mm. whole deal, it's not just winning. It's the fact that it looked like you were going to finish last and you still won. Right. <laughs> like the, that's the, that's the, that's the shtick. Like that's his bit. It's probably unintentional. He's not trying to look like right. that. Sometimes he might be, but that I think that bit is like you're like, oh, I want to, I want to ride that ride. I want to be over there, you know. And with Morikawa, it's like, oh yeah, he hit another one to eight feet. That's what he does, you know. <laughs> and so you get to the same endpoint, but you you do it very differently. I, I almost compare Morikawa to like a DJ. The, their personalities are different, but the way they play, it's just like, oh, right, uh, you know, drive right down the middle, hit it to eight feet make or miss your birdie putt and then onto the next hole. Yeah. And, and so it was super interesting that they played together at the Ryder cup. Remember at, at uh, I think at one or two, ma- I think two matches together, because even though they, they, they are very different as people like it, that their mold on the golf course is almost the same. And it's very, I mean, good golf, Chris Solomon of no way up says this good golf, really good golf is pretty boring. Right. You're just right. you're hitting it to 15 feet and you either miss the putt or you make it and then you go to the next one. And speed, 
is like the opposite of that. He plays <laughs> he plays lunatic golf, which is what Phil did, which I think is what made Phil so um, compelling and so interesting as a as a you know marketing vehicle for the last thirty years. And I think Spieth has a lot of that in him as well. It hmm. st- still is. I mean, look, like Phil at fifty one years old, and st- you know, it's like uh, probably not going to make the weekend, or I may win a major. You never know. <laughs> and and, and it, it's like you know, it, it's uh, you, you'll ju- you'll take it right at, at face value. And and I love the fact that Phil is like the uh, you know he's he's the he's the working man's man. You know, he's the everyday golfer as he's chugging. Twenty thousand dollar bottles of wine poolside, right? It's like, oh yeah, every man's doing that, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that that's, I mean, that's his greatest like trick, if you want to call it that, is like convincing people that he's just like them, and then doing what you said. I mean, Phil hasn't flown, you know, commercial in since he was like seventeen, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, well, wait a second, I thought. How, how, like it, it, that's, that's his whole like thing. And he, and he's done it really well, but I, I don't know how yeah. there's not a ton of truth to it. I don't think when you dig right. down. Right. So Cal, everybody thinks of golf and tennis as kind of like country club sports. Right. But yeah, Cal, Cal's from Eastern Tennessee. And what attracts him to golf is it's a combination between NASCAR and WWF right now <laughs> in terms of, in terms of just how weird it's got, has it gotten weirder since you became a fan of golf as a kid or what's going on? Yeah. So I think what I got asked this question a couple of months ago uh, in a different way, but I think what's happened is it's not necessarily gotten weirder, but it's more ubiquitous. And so there's more weird moments to capture. So like, before when um let's say the patrick reed thing where you know the ball at tory where it's like did it plug did you pick it up whatever maybe you know maybe in 1974 that's we're not like tv is not is not uh live yet maybe we don't have cameras out there yet and so because you have pj tour live because you have pretty much start to finish coverage of most a lot of these events at least at the pj tour level there's more like tiny moments to, to capture and to pull out until I like, talk about on Twitter or to write about or to do a book about or to, to talk about on a podcast. And I think because of that ubiquity, it's, it's more of a modern media thing than it is a golf thing. But, you know, when you have a football game on TV, you got the whole thing. You always have. It's not like in the past they were just broadcasting like the fourth quarter of a football game. You've always seen the whole thing. With golf, when you when you you widen the lens literally and figuratively, and like show all of it, you're like, oh, there's some really weird moments here, and I think because of that, it it really has um, it, it it it's kind of blown up a little bit more over the last five or ten years. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so I know we got to get you out of here, uh, but uh, did we ever see the uh, the Patrick Reed Snowman? Did you ever post it on on Twitter or anything? I did. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see that. I'll, I'll email it to y'all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Actually. Yeah. I think, yeah, I did. I did. I, yeah. I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so, so a couple things, right? So uh, in looking forward to 2022 and we all know, you know, what happened in 2020 and there was the break and, and a huge uh, adrenaline shot, right. For the, for, for golf and the golf community when, with the comeback of pretty much the only sport that really, you know, that came back and, and was impactful and, you know, I think the golfing community saw, you know, an, an uptick across, you, you, you name it, it was there. Uh, what's going to be, what's the next uplift or what's the next uptick that's going to keep golf as interesting or more interesting in 2022 and then going forward? I mean, wh- where do you see it going and what's happening? Ooh, that's interesting. You know, the thing that I've been really drawn to recently, and this is a little... I don't, this is probably unfair because it might be a life stage thing for me. I've got pretty fairly young kids. I've got, uh, I have four kids and they're all under nine. So the, the first reaction that I have to that is, um, shorter golf. So six hole golf, nine hole golf, 12 hole golf. And maybe that's a derivative of kind of what you're talking about of like people being outside more playing more. Hopefully that's still happening. I haven't looked at the numbers recently, but I'm, I've been really into one of my goals this year is to just get outside and play more par three courses with my sons, you know? And I think that that's a very different thing than like being buoyed by being the only sport that's on TV. You know, those are, those are like different worlds almost, but 
I think I think there's a a little bit of a movement, and maybe and this again, this is hard because I'm like too close to it a lot of times. You guys probably are as well. It's hard to tell like what is just my world and what is like actual reality for everybody. But I think there's a I think there's a path where it's like, hey, I went and played six holes, and that was my that was my goal was just to play six holes, and it took an hour. And I think that kind of thing can really compel and draw people in. It doesn't have to be, you know, I played. 36 on a 7,500 yard course, you know, every weekend, like that's, I don't have time for that. Most people don't have time for that. It doesn't even sound that fun, honestly. And so I'm curious to see kind of where that, if we're talking just recreation golf, like where that heads into the future. Yeah. What what about professionally? I mean, is there, uh, and and, I mean, there's no, I, I don't know what the answer is, but what, you know, what, where do you see professionally, right. From PGA perspective, What's the, what, what's the, what's the next trigger that's going to hit that's uh, like, you know, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it, I mean, so for example, right. Think about, so we just, uh, the Ryder cup last year. So yeah. we got, we, we got a break, you know, that that's from there. You get, you had the whole, uh, uh, I don't even want to say their names, but you, you, you had the WWE, you know, ish <laughs> kind of, kind of thing playing out between, uh, between the kids. Right. So, yeah. but you know, what's, what's the next spark that's going to, you know, that that's drawing people in. I mean, well, I think that the, I think the obvious answer, and and maybe this is again cheating a little bit, but I mean, if Tiger shows up to Augusta, mm-hmm. you know, then that's that's a obviously a big deal. I, I, I'm kind of split on whether he's going to or not. He looks so good at the PNC that you're like, mm-hmm. man, he's got a hundred and whatever, 10 days to, to figure out how to walk Augusta essentially. I mean, yeah. he, it seems like it could happen. I personally, like, I, th- I hope and think that he could show up at St. Andrews and that would be his first one back. I, hmm. I think that's, if he's going to win another major, <clears throat> I think that's his chance is for sure. Is, for is, sure. Is, is the British. I think that's a chance, but did you, so did you catch Phil at the, um, at the, at, at century when I don't know the first or second round, but when they were interviewing him and he was talking about how tired he was and how hard yeah. of a walk it was. Yeah. And I don't, there was something in my mind that just kind of said, did he just spark something? And, and is that an innuendo into, uh, Hey tiger, you can still do it. I, I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know if Phil is sending like, you know, shrouded messages to tiger over <laughs> golf channel, but I, you know, I, I just, I, I think that like for all the fun we've had over the last year and a half, two years, it's almost like not that we've forgotten about tiger, but if, if, and when tiger comes back, it's like, Oh yeah. Like tiger won the masters less than three years ago. Tiger can still be competitive at a St. Andrews at a Royal Troon at, at, cause I'm with you. Like it, I, I think that people are like, Oh, tiger and Augusta, tiger and Augusta. If tiger is even competitive at another major, I think it's an open championship because one, you gotta be incredibly wise and smart to win it or or, excuse me, you can win an open by being incredibly wise and smart, especially if there's weather tigers smarter and wiser than we saw this at at 2019. He didn't even play that good. He was just smarter than everybody else. True, And and so that can happen at an open and he doesn't have to, he can, he can hit it on the ground a little and, and, and just kind of like, I don't want to say bunt his way around some of those places, but those are places where he can apply. Look at, look at, look at Tom Watson in uh, yeah. with 17, 18. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and he's 20 years old, you know, older yeah. than the oldest guy that was out there. So, I mean, he can definitely, you know, just uh, yeah, little knockdown shots and uh, you yeah, know, make some putts. So. Yeah. Okay. I got, before I go, I got one for you guys. I, so I had to give predictions on CBS sports.com for this year of who would win, which we do this and it's like, I have no idea. I, I don't even know who's going to win majors when there's like three holes left, much well, we're, less. We're, we're not really into golf. We, we much, <laughs> much less <laughs> five, five months in advance. So, uh, major prediction winners. Do you guys, have you guys made them? Do you have them? Uh, kinda, kinda. I, I, I do think, uh, I think our most, well, I shouldn't say most recent, I, I think an Australian is going to win the masters. Okay. Uh, he, he may have just won a tournament. Uh, <laughs> so, so I, I, I think that, I think that's, that's a good possibility. Um, I, I think, uh, I probably like Rom for the open. Okay. The, the U S open. US yeah. Open. 
Uh, the I I don't know for the for the open I I don't know I don't know. I, what what open British Open what what are you what, what's yeah your, what's, your, I usually, what's your flavor what's your flavor I I usually go Open Championship open I thought championship. D, DJ had a great exchange last year where they're like hey do you call it the British Open and he goes no I used to and they're like why don't you call it the British Open anymore and he said well it, that's not its name it's the Open Championship. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's and, and, like, we're in, and we're in Ireland, so yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And they were like, Well, you know, do you get mad when people call it the British Open? And he's like, No. And <laughs> and they're like, Well, you know, what do you think about people who call it the British Open? And he goes, You can call it whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh Kyle, do you think Cameron Smith was a major this year? Uh I no, but I would say no to almost anybody, right? Because okay. it, it's just like, and this is the thing, like, I don't know if you guys follow data golf, but data golf.com yep. is that they, that there is, I think the, one of the best statistical, probably the best statistical website out there. And their prediction for John Rom major wins is like two and a half. Like that's his expected career major wins. And you're like, wait, Rom two and a half Rom's like by far the best guy in the world. And it's just I think majors are awesome and so special because people f- forget how few of them there are. Yeah. And to win one, I, I, and Tiger ruined everybody because it's like, oh, you won 15. Like, why haven't you won, you know, half that? And it's like to win two in this era, to win three in this era. I mean, what Spieth has done already, what, what Morikawa has done already. To win two mm-hmm. majors in this era is is almost historic. I mean, it's yeah. so, so yeah. good. And people are like, oh, what are you going to get to five? Are you going to get yeah. to seven? And it's like, there's only been six guys that have gotten to seven, you know? So I, I just, that's kind of my view on, on the way people kind of look at major championships. We know you like making really long bets. So Cal's got one for you here, um, <laughs> like a 20 year kind of bet. So do you think that Sanjay will ever break his birdie record? <laughs> He can't play that much, can he? Like, like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Sunjay, Sunjay looked at the schedule. He missed six tournaments last year, and he's already signed up for him. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he probably has, and he's he's a machine. I mean, I was looking at his, I was looking at him for Sony this week, and I think he averages like five a round. So you you just start racking up rounds, and it's like it, it's it's unbelievable. I, I guess I'll say no, but. <laughs> Only because he's bought a house and maybe he'll play one less event than he did before. No, let's, awesome. let's let's yeah, we, we can shut it off with uh, nobody else is going to break it. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Awesome. Awesome, man. Uh, Kyle Porter, uh, where can people find you? Where can they find the book? Where can they check out what Kyle Porter is doing? Yeah. Yeah. T- uh, for me, it's just Twitter at Kyle Porter CBS. And then the book is a normal sport.com. And, uh, yeah, it's been great. I've gotten, uh, just really helpful feedback and encouragement. And it's been, it's been a really cool experience because of, you know, people like you, uh, like you guys having me on to talk about it and, and to, uh, encourage along the way. So it's been a, it's been a really sweet thing for, for me to, uh, to, to kind of take that, that endeavor in my career. So I appreciate it. Well, thank yeah, you for well, doing that. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. We know you're a busy guy. And, and again, uh, you know, thanks for taking time to, uh, to talk with us. And I'm sure everybody will enjoy hearing it. And until next time, sir, cheers. Absolutely. Cheers. cheers.